Hello everyone and welcome to your Soul Nourishment weekly message. I am Christine, your Mind and Body Empowerment Coach. I hope that this video finds you all well. If you have not already, please go ahead and check out the rest of the videos on my channel. You can go into my uh, playlist section and see the different categories that I have. And I'm sure if it's not this message, there's something on there um, that you will find helpful at this time. So. With, with the Soul Nourishment reading, um, I actually last week I decided to change it up a little bit and focus specifically on body image. Um, this time of year, you know, obvious for obvious reasons, at least in the Northern Hemisphere, we are heading into summer. We are probably, I guess we're a little less than a month away from summer. And body image is at the forefront of everyone's minds for obvious reasons. We are wearing less clothing. We are showing up at the beach, the pool. Um, the lake, whatever it might be. Um, and so, you know, like I said, we're wearing less clothing, so we're in more a more vulnerable place. Um, our insecurities might be a little bit on high at this time because of that reason. All the focus is on looking good and having that summer body, being summer ready. Um, diet culture is coming in hard, preying on our insecurities. Same old story, just a different year, right? Just a different season. So anyway, I feel like for a little while, I think I'm gonna kind of stick with this and focus mostly on body image. So hopefully you guys will find this helpful. But like I said, if it's not this, um, there's probably something else on the channel that you will find helpful. So I, uh, I started with a uh, body positivity card. And this week we have self-compassion. That's the uh, key focus area for this coming week. But these messages are timeless, by the way. So it really doesn't matter when you come across this uh, video. Um, so it says, bodies come in all shapes and sizes. You weren't born thinking one type of body is better than another. Very true. When was the first time you heard someone say that your body was a problem? If you could go back in time, what would you like to say to this person? Consider writing a letter describing what you felt. It's up to you whether you send it. Wow. Okay. So... You know, this is a this is a touchy subject for mo for many of us out there. Now, I'm going to I'm going to say a couple things about this because and like I always say with all of my videos, take what resonates, leave what does not, apply these messages to wherever, however they fit best for you and your personal story, okay? Cuz it's obviously different for everybody. Now, the obvious thing here with this card is saying, you know, um has there been someone in your life or people in your life at some point in time, whether you were a child, whether you were a teen or now as an adult, um, or maybe you're old, you know, it doesn't matter. Has there been someone or people who have maybe said hurtful things or been judgmental um, in terms of your body or your physical appearance? Um, and it doesn't have to necessarily be like really hurtful words like you're ugly or um, whatever. It doesn't have to be like actual physical physical hurtful words. It could just be somebody who made you feel in some way that you were inadequate, you were not worthy enough based on your body size. Um, whether it be like, oh, you know, you might want to drop a few pounds or, oh, you know, um, or wow, I can't believe you're wearing that size of size jeans. So it's not that they necessarily said this horrendous thing, um, but it still sort of created trauma inside of you because you connected that with, wow, I'm not good enough as I am this person's judging me right now, making me feel pretty unlovable or unattractive or whatever the case might be. So, um, so right, so it doesn't have to be the like extreme hurtful words, but it could be, um, or it could be just something that somebody said that either they intended to come out that way or you might have just taken it in a negative way. I mean, it, it depends. Um, everybody sees things differently. So, and that's something you might not ever know depending on how you wanna handle the situation. But what this card is saying is, you know, when we come into this world, we are, we don't think about body size and shape and weight. We're just like, oh, I'm me and I feel great and I'm loving life and I don't, I don't care how I look in the mirror. Um, but, you know, enter conditioning and programming and diet culture and society and celebrity life and parents and friends and whatever. You know, it, it's so, it, it's so crazy. There's so much, so many layers, right? Um, all of these things that start coming into your life, into your reality, they make you question yourself, okay? Because as we know, diet culture places all of our worth and value in our weight, in our physical appearance, in our body size, okay? That's where they, that's where they tell us is our, our, our worth and our value, okay? Which obviously is not true. We are worthy simply because we exist. Our worth is not found in our weight or in our physical appearance. But that is how we are conditioned and that's how we are programmed to believe Therefore, it makes sense 
that, you know, as you get older, you start to question yourself or feel unworthy because of your body size if it doesn't fit into the highly un unattainable standards that our culture has set. Now, also with that comes people who, you know, unfortunately are also conditioned and programmed just like you are that will say things to you that will make you feel less than worthy, but not always intentionally. Not everyone is a hard, heartless, cool person, but sometimes people say things because of conditioning. They think it's coming from a place of love or like, I care about you, but really it's actually hurting you. Like say a parent saying to you, you know, Susie, you might want to drop a couple pounds. Like you're, you're, you've gained some weight over the past couple months, and it's. I think it's time that you lose a little weight or something like that, right? That could be very hurtful, right? Because because you take that as I am not good enough, I am not worthy enough, I am not lovable enough as I am right now. My mother is telling me to lose parts of myself so that I am more attractive, acceptable, whatever the case may be, right? So that's hurtful, and we take that in as. Tr uh, trauma, right? And when inside of our body, it kind of manifests into all of this negative energy that we keep trapped. And from that place, we could get stuck in this endless cycle and spiral of just, you know, negative self-talk and limiting beliefs and self-judgment and self-objectification and, you know, constant dieting and constant restricting and just all kinds of stuff that is not helpful. It's very hurtful. So I'm going to continue on with the reading, but I will touch back to what this card says. Okay, so next I actually decided to, and I ended up pulling a bunch of cards, um, I actually decided to clarify again with some tarot. Uh, I just wanted to get a little bit deeper of a message, verification or validation around this, this specific uh, body image card. So first we got, um, well, you know what? It's interesting because of how everything kind of fell out together. So the first card that actually came out was the devil. So I'm going to show you that. Okay. Now, for those of you who don't know, if you don't follow tarot, um, the devil is, it, it's not really as scary as it might seem. <laughs> you know, um, to me, in this specific instance, it's definitely representing um, some trapped energy. Like I just said, you know, whether it's thoughts, beliefs, feelings, emotions that you've sort of withheld inside of your body as trauma based off of like this card says, something that somebody said or a group of people have said or led you to believe over the years, okay? So it's sort of this like negative, because if you see this girl is blindfolded in this little cage here, and to me, that's kind of saying someone who, you know, she's trapped, right? But not necessarily, not physically trapped, trapped in her mind, okay? So this could be, like I said, it could be this sort of trapped energy that you still have in your body that you need to work through, heal through, and release. Um, and it, you know, and it could just be representing, like I said, like negative thoughts, a negative mindset, a pattern that you keep kind of going back to. This could also be an addiction of some sort. Um, you know, oftentimes people who have a hard time, um, comprehending why they feel so, you know, um, what's the word, just very self-conscious or self-critical all the time, they self-medicate in order to kind of push that all away. It's like, I don't want to deal with all this dark energy, so I'm just going to do whatever, you know, fill in some sort of addiction because that in the moment makes me feel better, but really it's just adding to the situation. No judgments, just saying that sometimes that's what the devil card could represent. Um, and also to me, this card could represent a person or group of people who have said hurtful things to you, who have made you question your worth and value. Um, not everybody does that. Some people, like I said, will say things that they think are coming, or not they think, that are coming from a place of love, but really it's a place of conditioning, okay? But they're not out to hurt you or out to make you feel like a piece of poop. Um, however, there are people who are just mean um, who do say really hurtful things, okay? So that could also be um, what this devil card is representing. So then I pulled out, we have the son of coins, the daughter of wands, and the daughter of cups. So I'm just gonna pick these cards up and show you real quick. And these cards all came out together, which is so interesting to me. Um, because to be honest, at first I'm like, oh, that's weird. Like, who are all these people? And I'm like, oh, duh. Like, <laughs> I have a candle going here. My hand's going to burn off. Um, so for me right away, I was like, okay, that makes sense. These are the people. These are the people, um, in your life, whether it be presently or in the past who have maybe made you feel bad. This could be, you know, the fact that we have these two females here and, and, we do have this male energy coming through, but it could still be a female with just the masculine energy coming through. It's kind of, it's a little gossipy energy for me. So it could be people who have maybe um, 
again, made you question your worth in some way, shape, or form. Um, or, you know, sometimes I even think of, like, the mean girls. Like, it's not, like, maybe necessarily that, say, in high school, you know, it's more of something that you that you absorbed, but it's not that anybody said anything bad to you, but you saw these girls maybe, let's just, I'm just using an example, you saw these girls at school, like the cool kids, right? Like they sat at the cool table or they sat at the back of the bus and they fit that description of the perfect body or the perfect whatever based on society, right? And you didn't, so you took that in as I'm not good enough. It's not that they necessarily said or did anything to you, but you could have taken, um, not really offense, but you could have taken in this story of I'm not good enough because I don't look like them and look how popular they are and look how unpopular I am. Whatever the case is, I'm just giving an example that just popped up into my head. Doesn't have to be your story, but it could be. Um, or like I said, these those three people could be representing male or female uh, people in your life who have made you feel bad in some way, shape, or form, whether it be intentionally or unintentionally, okay? And finally, um, we have the emperor here. Now, a couple things with this. This could represent, for me, this could represent a couple different things. Uh, again, apply this to where this fits for you. Um, with the emperor, typically on his own, there's not, you know, the emperor is a very strong-willed human. Um, he or she uh, really follows their intuition, knows what they want, go, goes after it, stands in their personal power, isn't afraid to, you know, take action and follow their soul path and all that good stuff, right? The emperor really takes control is what I'm getting at here. Um, but in this spread, it could very well be saying, because it came out kind of summing everything up, that these people or the trauma that came, that birthed from what these people have said to you um, has really had power and control over you. And again, this comes back to the devil card. So this, this doesn't have to be a person that has had control over you. It could just be, um, like I said, all of the thoughts and the beliefs and the negative energy that has come from situations, whether in the present or in the past, that have made you question your worth and value and that are keeping you now trapped with this devil card, right? That are keeping you from really letting go and moving forward and stepping into your power. Um, now, to that point, this emperor could very well be representing you now finally stepping into your power, okay? Because like this card suggested, you could very well write a letter to a person or a group of people if you so desire to let them know how what they said hurt you, how you felt about the situation, um, but also offering up some forgiveness so that way you could really be free. It's not necessarily condoning if it was something hurtful that they said. It's not condoning what they said as like, well, no big deal. No, it's the purpose is, okay, I, I see it for what it is. I accept that it happened. Um, I choose to forgive you to release myself from the situation because again, with this devil energy coming out and it doesn't have to be that you're going through any sort of addiction. It was just, you know, you could be, but whatever has happened to you um, in terms of hurtful things people have said or alluded to or whatever, it's kept you trapped. It's kept you small. It's kept you up in your head. It's kept you obsessing. It's kept you in, in this dark energy. Okay. And you know, by you offering up forgiveness to another, it's not to necessarily set them free, though it could be because forgiveness is a gift that you are also giving to another person. But most importantly, it's for yourself. It's to bring inner peace, balance, and harmony back into your own self so you can finally create space to welcome in something, some new beautiful energy, empowering energy into your life. You can't really do that when you're in this devil energy. You have to make space, you have to be, be willing to heal through some hurtful things, to transmute them from pain into love, pain into power, which is all about the emperor here, right? He is the king of transmuting pain into power, into love, okay? So um, again, take, take that how it resonates most with you, okay? Um, now I also pulled two of my goddess cards and <laughs> I always laugh, but the first one that came out was Ishtar with boundaries, okay? And we also have Ostara with fertility. So check these beauties out. I'll read the cards in one second. Okay, so we have Ishtar with boundaries saying, love yourself enough to say no to others. Oh, I'm sorry. Love yourself enough to say no to others' demands on your time and energy. Okay, and then with Ostara Fertility, we have, it is the perfect time for you to start new projects, 
access new ideas and give birth to new conditions. Okay, perfect. So obviously with the boundaries card here coming out, this is saying like, obviously yes, setting boundaries is super important. Setting boundaries is important, no doubt about it. Um, to protect yourself, to protect your energy, to protect your, um, your precious energy, your values, your beliefs, um, just to protect yourself, right? To protect your spirit, okay? Boundaries are very important, not just for you, but to uh, honor other people as well. And, you know, and, and when you uphold your own personal boundaries, when you um, stay true to your boundaries, that teaches other people how to treat you, okay? So for example, if someone were to say something somewhat negative to you, it doesn't have to be super hurtful, just somewhat, eh, like that wasn't cool. A boundary would be, hi person, didn't really appreciate that, Thank you for sharing your opinion, but here's why I disagree. You know, it doesn't, it, it's not about attacking the other person or making them feel small or insignificant. It's, it's coming at it from a higher uh, consciousness, a higher level of consciousness, speaking with love. Um, there's a quote by Mark David, this, the truth spoken with love and consciousness is always heard. And for me, that is hardcore about boundaries because boundaries, you know, I have to show you this card again because she is just like, I know myself, like know thyself, okay? I honor myself, I choose love, okay? Even if that means I need to speak my truth in a forceful way, but not in a, in a hurtful way, if that makes sense. So a strong-willed way, um, which is the emperor card here, but not in a hurtful way. Because like it says, love yourself enough to say no to others' demands and your time and injury. So it, it comes from a place of self-love. And I actually forgot to show you that at the bottom of the deck, after I had shuffled here, um, we also have the Ace of Swords. Oh, geez, the Ace of Swords. I didn't put this out on the spread because I have so many cards. But the Ace of Swords came out. And, and the Ace of Swords is really about, you know, honoring your truth, speaking your truth, okay? Getting to the heart of the matter. So it comes back to this writing this letter, okay? Whether you decide to send it to this person or group of people or not, it doesn't matter because it's about you forgiving so that you can be free, okay? And you need to be able to speak your truth in order to do so. And that's also something that the emperor knows all about, right? And I think that with this boundaries card, that's also saying that. It's also speaking to speaking your truth. You know, you know, uh, honoring your truth, honoring what's right for you, sticking up for yourself, setting boundaries. So if someone comes at you with something hurtful, you know, don't allow that. Don't allow someone to walk all over you to make you feel less than. I mean, the more you feel grounded in who you are, it really doesn't matter what other people say anyway. However, that does not give them free reign to walk all over you to say hurtful things or to make you feel small. So again, it's about setting those boundaries from a place of love. I appreciate your perspective. Like let's say for example, it's somebody who says, hey, I think you should drop a few pounds or hey, it looks like you've gained a little weight, you know, haha. -ha. Um, not that that's a bad thing, but from, from their perspective, from their conditioned perspective, they're kind of saying it as a bad thing, right? We know that, okay? So your response could very well be, and this would be a boundary, because you're not allowing them to take your power. You're taking your power back by responding from a place of love, but truth as well. Um, and that would be, you know, yeah, I did, maybe I did gain some weight, but that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with gaining weight. That's absolutely fine. I appreciate your concern, but actually I feel totally great in my in my body right now so thank you thank you anyway okay and move on <laughs> um so that would be just an example of setting a boundary of hey i'm not going to allow you to take my power because i know with that comment that you just made you thought that that was going to sting a little bit right you thought that was going to sting a little bit but actually it kind of just vibrated right off of me it bounced right off of me so you're taking the power back you're speaking your truth you're getting you're you're, you're just you're like, nope, let me tell you what's up. Here's the truth, okay? And also, you know, Ace of Swords is um, uh, associated with Archangel Michael, and Archangel Michael is all about protection. So that also comes back to setting boundaries, okay? And know that you have the green light in doing so. This to me is Archangel Michael coming in saying, I am protecting you from others trying to hurt you in any way, shape, or form. But also, you have the green light in terms of setting those boundaries and speaking your truth, speaking your mind, um, and just standing up for yourself, okay? And then also with fertility here, I'm just, I'm gonna go through this quickly. I realize I'm taking forever. Um, so again, it is the perfect time for you to start new projects, access new ideas, and give birth to new conditions. For me, this is just kind of reiterating what I said 
in terms of, you know, the emperor being ready to um, heal, you know, move through that energy, release, let go, transmute all of that negative pent up energy from, you know, from pain into power, into love. Okay. So to me, that's kind of what this is saying. Cause like I said, you can't really do that. Um, if you're still stuck in this devil energy, you have to transmute that. You have to be able to release and let go. So you can make space for new to come in new, exciting experiences that maybe you've been putting on hold or haven't been able to come into your reality because you've been so stuck on, something that might have happened in the past or just people in your present moment that are kind of bringing you down a little bit. And again, let's just reiterate one more time, you could very well release and work through some of this energy by writing a letter. You do not have to send it. You could burn it, you can rip it up, you could bury it, whatever you wanna do. You can read it out loud to the universe and do a little ritual and say, I release thee, you know, I surrender, like I'm ready to move on, whatever the case is, okay? Whatever you think would be best to help you uh, move through that energy, transmute it, let it go so that you can make space uh, for new to come in and you can move on and feel free, okay? And finally, finally, we have, I pulled some Shocker Love cards. These all came flying out all at the same time. So I'm gonna read through real quick, okay? Now it's funny because we pulled the self-compassion card today. First card that came out was compassion, of course, with the heart chakra here. Resolve your conflicts with compassion, exactly. Right? Again, speaking from a place of love and truth. We also have another heart chakra card that came out, self-love. You can only love others as much as you love yourself. Okay. So, and, and that also speaks to, you know, um, it's hard to really forgive somebody fully um, when you're not really loving on you. Okay. It's hard to give that to another person. It's hard to really give that person that gift of forgiveness if you're still not cool with yourself. So the more you work on you, loving you, growing that bond, growing that relationship, it's going to open up this whole space for you to then gift someone with that gift, gift someone with that gift of forgiveness. Because again, it is a gift. You're releasing them from that, from those binds, okay, as well, when you forgive that other person. So, um, so the more you work on you, the more likely it will be for you to release and let go and forgive that other person or group of people, okay? And then finally, we have two cards here for the, from the crown chakra, also interesting. We have calmness, to calm your monkey mind, do not feed the animal. So we have calmness here. And then finally, we have divinity, recognize the divine in the mirror, I love that. Okay, so, and again, to me, this, the, the calmness speaks to um, just coming at this from a calm, compassionate, loving place. Again, with that quote, the truth spoken with love and consciousness is always heard. So this is not about attacking people. This is not about judging, bringing others down, pointing the finger. No, no, you need to take responsibility for everything that you have um, absorbed at this point. You, only are, you are the only one that has power and control over like I said, working through that, healing through that, transmuting it and releasing it, okay? And, and, and turning it all into the energy of love. You are the only one that has power and control over that. Um, but do so from a place of compassion, compassion for yourself, compassion for others, okay? Love for yourself, love of others. Um, and through a calm, uh, gentle way, okay? This, this, is a, this, this whole process is not easy, um, but, Forgiveness needs to be handled definitely from a calm and compassionate place. Otherwise, it's not going to be authentic, right? It's not going to, no one's really going to feel like you've moved on or, you know, it's like when somebody does something and they're just like, sorry. Or if, you know, you tell your kid like, oh, apologize to so-and-so and they're like, oh, sorry, like that sort of energy. That's not calm. That's not gentle. That's not compassionate. That's not authentic. <laughs> okay, so we always know, right? We always know. Um, and then with divinity, I mean, beautiful, right? To recognize the divine in the mirror. Okay, you are a divine sovereign being. You are an energetic divine being made of love and light and consciousness and just, just beautiful energy, okay? Remember that, remember who you are. Remember that people who come into your life to teach you a lesson through a negative way, like maybe making a hurtful comment at you or whatever the case is, again, they're teaching you about self-love. They're teaching you about self-worth, okay? They're teaching you how to set boundaries. Okay, they're teaching you how to trust your own intuition, how to follow your own heart, right? Because the, the truth is, it doesn't matter what other people say. It doesn't matter what other people's opinions are. It doesn't matter what diet culture says. It doesn't matter that we've been conditioned to hate our bodies. It doesn't matter. If you are solid and grounded in the truth of you, okay, then none of that matters. 
none of it matters, okay? The less and less and less and less, all that stuff will resonate with you. Like I said, it'll bounce right off of you. And also what I wanted to say was, you know, about the, you know, the people who you perceive as maybe enemies or, or whatever it is, okay, or people that have maybe kept you trapped or you feel like they've kept you trapped. Nobody has really kept you trapped. But whatever has occurred between you and those people or that person has created this feeling of stuckness and stagnation and, and sort of this dark, toxic energy here, okay? Um, recognize the divine in them too, okay? Because we are all, we are all divine beings, all of us. We all deserve love, okay? It doesn't matter what place you're at, what side of the fence you're on, okay? Because again, those people are also operating from a place of conditioning and programming as well. So, you know, and, and I understand some people do say hurtful things. It doesn't matter though. Those people are still coming from a place of insecurity for sure in themselves, but also conditioning. Okay, so understand people can only meet you where they are at. Do not take it personal. Do not take it personal, please. Okay, it's, it's something that they need to work through on their own, that they need to heal through. The more you work on you and the more likely you are able to send them forgiveness and give them that gift of forgiveness, the more likely they are to wake up and to realize, oh, I am a divine being made of love and light too. I don't have to act that way. I can learn to love myself too. And that's great. And then somebody else will do the same thing, right? Because the more you work on you, somebody else is gonna do it, and then somebody else is gonna do it. And that's just the way that it works because we are all connected, my friends, okay? Whew, another long message, but I love this one, super important. I hope that you found it helpful. Let me know down in the comments below. If you haven't already, please like this video, share it if you think anybody out there could benefit from it, and definitely subscribe to my channel. I would greatly, greatly appreciate it. Until next time, my friends, I wish you a fabulous weekend, and I will talk to you again soon. Take care, bye.